Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0345 6060 973. Uh, it's ten minutes before eight is the time. We'll come back to our conversation concerning both Nicholas Sturgeon and Boris Johnson. But in the context of the latter of those two political beasts, let's turn to one of his long-time allies and friends. I speak of Secretary of State for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities and Conservative MP Michael Gove, who joins me now. Thank you for coming on, Mr Gove. Um, if you accept that a party that does not have unity is likely to be wiped out at the polls, you were too young, but I remind you of the Conservatives under Mrs Thatcher or Labour under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, what are you doing to get the party united again? Good morning. Hi, good morning, Nick. It's very flattering that you think that I'm too young to remember Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair. And no, Gordon I thought you'd Brown. remember Margaret Thatcher, but perhaps not. Uh, <laughs> I remember Tony Blair, but perhaps not Margaret Thatcher. How will you get unity back in, Mr. Gove? Well, I, I believe that the uh, overwhelming majority of Conservative supporters, and certainly all MPs in the House of Commons, support Rishi Sunak in making sure that we focus on our five essential priorities, that we make sure that we retain that uh, intense focus on halving inflation, reducing debt, growing the economy, cutting waiting lists and stopping the boats. That is the programme around which the Conservative Party is united. That's the programme the Prime Minister is delivering. But of course, uh, Boris standing down is a moment for all of us to reflect. And uh, it gives me an opportunity to say thank you to him for his public service while he was Prime Minister and the achievements that he has to his record. I thought last year, after three Prime Ministers in a cruelly rapid succession, Mr Sunak was going to bring in a period of calm. This is not calm. You've got three by-elections on the way, people standing down and the party at war. What's gone wrong? Well, you do have within government calm, focused, uh, delivery-oriented hard work going on every day. So uh, later today, I'll be having a meeting with uh, other ministers, civil servants and outside experts to look at how we can focus research and development money, the, you know, the vital yeast that leads to growth, how we can make sure that money uh, and that investment is spread more evenly across the United Kingdom, not just Oxford, Cambridge and London, but also Newcastle and Manchester. Of course, uh, it will be the case that people will uh, later this week be looking at the Privileges Committee report, making their own judgment on that report. But uh, I think that if you were to join me in any of the meetings uh, that I have today and throughout the week, you would observe uh, a professionalism and focus on the part of government ministers and officials who are seeking to deliver on the priorities that I've outlined. Well, how, how do you react to the fact that the party will be, face, will be fighting three by-elections in fairly quick order? Well, uh, politicians fight elections all the time. And again, by-elections... Uh, well, well, not necessarily the, when, the... when people flounce off, as it's been described in two cases, Mr Adams and Ms Dorries. Um, uh, again, you were, you were flattering enough to suggest that I um, didn't remember Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. I remember uh, as a Conservative MP campaigning in by-elections when Tony Blair and Gordon Brown uh, were Prime Minister and, and indeed during my time in the Coalition and the Conservative government. They are a feature of political life. Now, that's not to say that these uh, by-elections will be easy. It's always difficult for the incumbent government, the guys who happen to be in the box seat at the time when you have a by-election. But we We've got good Conservative candidates, and I think that uh, we can be confident that they'll give a good account of themselves, and we'll be uh, making sure that people appreciate, uh, which I think is right, that in elections, people will reward those politicians who are focusing on the really important priorities, the economy, the NHS, dealing with illegal migration, and as I said earlier, making sure that we fire up the innovation that generates growth. Um, how critical would you be of Nadine Doris, Nigel Adams, that some would say they should have focused on the greater good of the Conservative Party rather than being motivated by personal support for Boris Johnson? Well, again, I Is don't know question, what... Is question, Mr Gove? No, I don't know what the motivations uh, were. But I, again, uh, I worked with Nadine, I worked with Nigel. Uh, I respect them. Uh, anyone uh, who devotes, as both of them did, years to public service deserves our gratitude. What, uh, how should we remember Boris Johnson as Prime Minister and as Conservative politician? I think as a, a really significant figure in the history of our times who had to deal with uh, two unprecedented crises, uh, war in Europe, 
um, the biggest conflict on the European continent since 1945, in which he displayed iron resolution in supporting Vladimir Zelensky, dealing with the COVID pandemic, which was a devastating blow for uh, uh, every developed economy and indeed the, the globe. He was responsible for the vaccines task force, for the appointment of Kate Bingham and for the fastest vaccine rollout in, in Europe. And we should also thank him for resolving the Brexit deadlock, uh, for uh, restoring confidence uh, that Parliament could get things done. After two years of gridlock, it was Boris who got Brexit done. What went wrong? Well, I think historians will want to reflect, I'm sure, on uh, all the different aspects of uh, all the different outworkings of politics and personalities over the last few years. But I think you're right that as well as reflecting on those things that uh, that may have gone wrong, those individual decisions that, uh, uh, you know, uh, have led to difficulties for particular colleagues, we should also reflect on what their government overall has done to uh, improve the lives of individuals. You were discussing Ofsted earlier, the very, very sensitive matter, of course. But uh, in discussing Ofsted, we're inevitably looking at it uh, against a backdrop of an education system that's improved over the last 13 years to the extent that uh, children in England are the best readers in the Western world. Yes, I mean, my, my question, of course, was what went wrong for Boris Johnson, though? I don't quite know how we got on to Ofsted. What, what should he have done differently? How can we reflect on that? Well, again, uh, I think uh, it's, it's inevitably uh, difficult for me, having served in Boris's government, having wanted him to succeed and feeling a sense of sadness at his passing. Um, I think it would be premature for me to pass a definitive judgment of that kind. Uh, I, I think it's better for commentators, columnists, historians and others to, to draw their own conclusions. What I can do is reflect on uh, those government successes that occurred while Boris was Prime Minister and thank him for the role that he played in showing leadership, as I mentioned earlier, on the pandemic, on Ukraine and on Brexit. Would you actively welcome him returning as an MP, Mr Gove? Well, uh, again, Bo Boris has uh, sometimes been on the receiving end of advice from me in the past. Uh, sometimes he's welcomed it, sometimes he hasn't, uh, but he makes his own mind up. So I wouldn't presume to offer him uh, any advice about the future. What is the current state of the relationship between you and Mr Johnson? Is it warm? Uh, I, I continue to respect Boris and all that he's achieved. Uh, just this time last week, uh, we were in the House of Commons together. Uh, uh, Boris was raising questions about the progress of levelling up. I was able to reassure him that uh, his determination to make sure that we spread opportunity more equally across the United Kingdom remains a central mission for this government. And I think anyone who observed um, our exchanges, our public exchanges then, would have said that they were cordial and constructive. To my listeners in Middlesbrough and Redcar and Hartlepool, why is levelling up anything more than a slogan? How have their lives improved, Mr Gove? Well, I think, uh, talking about Middlesbrough and Redcar, you can look at the achievement of the Mayor of Tees Valley, Ben Houchen. You can see the way in which investment has been levered into those communities, the way in which uh, they're at the cutting edge of the uh, uh, green energy revolution, the renewable sector investment there is making a difference to their lives, bringing high quality, high paying jobs to their communities. Um, and it was also the case, as I mentioned uh, uh, briefly earlier, that we're going to double down on that. The research and development money, the uh, uh, investment that goes into universities, colleges and businesses that creates the technologies of the future and provides those high quality jobs. We are making sure that the additional R&D money that we have goes to precisely those communities. And, and you think everyone who needs levelling up would be as equally as pleased with the results so far, wherever that might be in the country, moving away from Tees Valley? Yeah, we've always got to do better, but it's also the case that uh, we've had a significant investment in Blackpool uh, in order to make sure that we have new housing and the regeneration of the uh, the town centre there. Uh, we've committed to, in uh, just up the Lancashire coast in Morecambe, to a new Eden Project North, a £100 million investment, again, that will bring jobs and provide educational opportunities. Uh, it's also the case on, on, on the east coast, uh, uh, slightly further south, obviously, than the Tees Valley. In Grimsby, uh, we've uh, unlock significant investment there in order to improve the town centre and to uh, enhance transport links. So across the country, we are working energetically and in a focused well, way to Woking, provide opportunity. Well, in Woking, you've gone bust. The council well, went bust, is, record debts. Yeah, That's conservative the, control of a local authority for you, Mr Gove. 
It is the case that there have been a number of local authorities which have had difficulties um, with their finances. Difficulties? Slough. more than a billion pounds? Yeah, you're broke. telling me. I, I was the person who uh, sent in the uh, commissioners to make sure that we dealt with it. But Woking, Croydon, Slough, they're all local authorities. Well, if you uh, can't some run Labour Slough, it's hardly some... surprising you can't run the country, isn't it? Well, Slough was a Labour authority that, all right, Woking, uh, that ran it doesn't matter. If you can't run Woking, how can you possibly run the United Kingdom? Well, uh, the thing about Woking is that decisions were taken by individuals from across parties. But, yeah, it's a significant problem in Woking. And that's why we at national government level are intervening. It's also why uh, I'm creating a new body uh, to make sure that we've got more effective audit and intervention powers for local government. Last couple of questions. How would you describe relations between Mr Johnson and Rishi Sunak? Uh, uh, the respect that one prime minister gives to uh, a predecessor. Um, I think that the, the key thing about um, uh, anyone who takes on that role is that they respect anyone else who has a, that role. Do you think that was a respectful statement from Mr Johnson on the weekend? Yeah, well, Boris, uh, as ever, always expresses himself with a pungency and individuality that's been his hallmark throughout his political career. Well, he but, wanted to sack yeah. Rishi, didn't he? Gitto Harris, you all know well, his former communications chief, told me that Rishi Sunak was about to be demoted from Chancellor before he lost office, before Boris left office. Doesn't speak of a warm relationship, does it? Well, I, I don't know about that. And I mean, I know um, you always I, like I, fighting in a sack, but that's taking it no. to new levels, isn't it? No, um, I, uh, uh, you know that I'm a, a pussycat and that um, the last thing that I want to do is ever get uh, uh, into a scrap. Um, and, and I won't with, um, yeah. you know, people who are, uh, you know, are broadcasting on LBC. As Her Late Majesty said, recollections may vary. Uh, one last question for you very much on your uh, business brief. I thought mm. that, I thought that uh, Conservatives were all about enhancing business and creating opportunities. Mm. So why aren't you allowing a Papa John's restaurant to open in Tyneside? Uh, this is a decision by the Independent Planning Inspectorate, um, and the planning inspectors make their decisions in accordance with uh, local plans. So uh, it, it, it's a decision, all decisions by the planning inspectorate are made in the name of the Secretary of State, in the same way as all decisions by government are made in the name of His Majesty's government. Well, it says here in His Majesty's Daily Telegraph that the decision has been taken because of fears it would exacerbate childhood mm. obesity in the area. Are you now, or are your colleagues now, making decisions on whether people are going to get fat? Uh, well, there is so much to say there. The first thing is uh, I'm going to look into uh, this decision just to satisfy myself uh, that I ah, understand. So the you weren't aware to, to go. Uh, and I it is the case that there are lots of decisions that are made by the planning inspectors uh, that are made in my name, in the Secretary of State's yes. name, but are not my decisions. So this has not scrutinised by me, yet, Mr. Gove. Indeed not. And the Daily Telegraph has ever done a superb job in reporting. Um, but it, it's not my position that I want to deprive the citizens of Tyneside of a thick crust meat feast uh, whenever appropriate. Uh, but I do need to look at this decision because, again, there will have been processes that will have been followed. And in my experience, the planning inspectors do a bang up professional job uh, and they will be considering lots of local planning criteria, uh, which, it, you know, uh, looking at the detail will give me an opportunity to better understand the decision-making process here. So the takeaway from the pizza story is you're going to review it? Uh, uh, the, <laughs> I, I will. Um, I, I'm not sure if I can add any additional toppings to the decision that's already been made, um, but I will get stuck into it, yes. Grateful as ever for your time. Michael Gove, thank you. Secretary of State for levelling up housing and communities. A little late to the news, three after eight. LBC headlines. Thomas Watts. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom, the inquiry into claims Boris Johnson misled MPs is expected to reach its conclusion later.